Well, good morning this morning. How's everyone doing? How's everyone doing? Oh, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. You know, this is definitely a two-way conversation, so you got to help me out as I, as I talk about today's subject. Wow, football season is in the air. Okay, okay, all right. Well, today I'm going to do something that's going to seem a little bit countercultural, a sort of weird, sort of strange. As you know, at Fellowship Church, if you come here very much, we always teach the Bible. We believe the Bible. We even believe the maps. We're under the authority of God's Word, and we teach it in an uncompromising fashion. Today, though, I'm going to tell you how to thrive in something that will seem countercultural. In other words, normally when I talk about a subject, I'll say, okay, here's how to have victory over insecurity. Or here is how to walk in Godfidence. Well, today I thought, I want to do something different. I want to talk about how to live in insecurity. I thought about how do you live? How do you really increase your fear of rejection? Because there's someone we're going to talk about who lived in that fear, so I thought, let's learn from it. I don't know about you, but I deal with insecurity. I don't know about you, but I don't like rejection, but I've been rejected. Think about all those times you've been rejected in your life. Maybe it's a you know, sports thing, the quintessential I was cut from the football team or didn't make the cheerleading squad. Or maybe you got cut from your job. You got rejected. Or you tried to get into this group or that group and they just said sorry, sort of shunned you. Maybe you felt like it was a financial thing, a racial thing, a behavioral thing. I don't know, but we've all been rejected. And so often, I don't want to face the future because of my past. I don't want to feel the feelings in the future like I've felt in the past regarding rejection. I don't want to feel tomorrow like I felt yesterday. Rejection. How do we live in the fear of rejection? I'm going to speak in millennialese today. Any millennials here? If you're a millennial? Oh, don't, don't be shy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Millennials have come up with some really cool phrases. So I thought, why not speak millennialism, you know, or millennialese or however you want to say it. I like millennialese or what, that's a millennialism. Both sound good. Very creative phrase. I think memorable phrases that, that, that we're not going to forget because this will help us increase, as I said, our fear of Rejection. I've been in a series on Samuel. Samuel is an Old Testament guy, a difference maker, a leader, a stand-up guy. I'm calling this series Sam I Am. Why Sam I Am? Well, yeah, Dr. Seuss, you might have read Green Eggs and Ham. I'm calling it Sam I Am because Samuel had a great connection, a great relationship with the great I Am, one of the names of God. And that's the goal of the series, to learn from him, to see how he dealt with different scenarios, different people, different situations. Today, he's going to meet Saul. That's right, Saul. Lady Saul was handsome. This guy would have been a cover model for a romance novel. Six feet six, research him, long black hair, a booming voice, he just had that it factor. Came from a lot of wealth, and he was like legit. You know what I'm saying to you? Saul, yeah. Saul met Samuel in sort of a weird way. You might say, oh, it was serendipitous. Oh, that was just luck. No, 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 no. 
How often do we have divine appointments with people through the sovereignty of God and we don't even realize it? So I love this. Saul had lost some of his father's donkeys. Now you might think, oh, well, what does that matter? Well, back in the Middle East, donkeys were like F-250 pickups. Seriously. And if you lost three or four F-250 pickups, you would go looking for them, wouldn't you? So Saul's out there looking for the donkeys, and this is what's so funny about him. The, the, the guy was like in a daze. I don't know, I'm not sure if he had all the line on his reel. I'm not sure if, you know, I don't know what happened. That was the kind of a fishing joke, like all the line on his reel, a little slow. He'd never heard of Samuel. Here's Samuel from the same area. Samuel was trending. I mean, he was like, everyone knew Samuel. And Saul's like, Samuel, who was that? They meet because Saul is looking for donkeys and they had this intense conversation and Samuel says, you know, Saul, um, you're gonna be the next president of Israel. Whoa. Now we're gonna understand about insecurity. We're gonna understand about the fear of rejection. As you read about God's people, you've got the perfect will of God and the permissive will of God. God didn't want his people to have an earthly king. I mean, God wanted, he, he wanted them to understand that he was the king. Yet they were like, oh man, the neighboring nations, they have a king, we want a king. Mom, dad, they get to stay out until 1 a.m. Mom and dad, they got a brand new Ferrari when they were 15, you know? Adults were the same. Why do they get to travel there? Why do they live there? You know, we're the same, we're the same. So God's people, God, we want a king. And here's what God does. It's not his perfect will. I mean, for example, God's perfect will is for all of us to repent and to know Jesus Christ personally. It's his perfect will. Yet, his permissive will, within that, we have a freedom of choice and we can choose to do things our own way. Oftentimes, the discipline of God is giving us what we want. You know, I want money, God. I hear you, but I want more and more money. Sometimes God's discipline is just piling money all over you. Some are like, I like that discipline. <laughs> Others are like, you know, I just, I just want to have sex with anybody, anytime. I mean, no strings attached. God will say, you know what? Go for it. Many times when we get what we want, we don't want what we got. So God can and does discipline us by going, okay, okay. He did the same thing with his people. You, you want a king? You really want an earthly king? Okay, I'll have Samuel to tap Saul on the shoulder while Saul's looking for donkeys. And basically Samuel said, it's on like Donkey Kong. I just made that phrase up. Have you ever heard that before? I just made it up, man. Well, here's the first way to live in insecurity. Are you ready? Just nod your head. If you're ready, knock on plastic in front of you. That's, those are plastic seats. Knock on it. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right. Number one, make sure you're spitting mist. Make sure you're spitting mist. You're saying, Ed, what are you talking about? Spitting mist means you talk negatively about yourself. That's a millennialism, or I'm speaking millennialese. You're spitting mist. So kind of do this. Don't spit, but just kind of. Do you ever talk bad about yourself? Have you ever just stopped yourself and like, what am I saying about myself? I can't believe I'm saying that. I sometimes talk bad about myself. Saul was talking bad about himself. We know he was. Here, Samuel's going, Saul, you're the man, and check out. It sounds like humility at first. It's really kind of a humble brag, but let's let just, 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 just stay with me. Saul replied, and Saul's talking to Samuel. Now, I'm not gonna spell today, because the last time I spelled 
Lisa told me, honey, you misspelled every single word. <laughs> That's okay. I can draw a little bit, so I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna stick to drawing because I can draw okay, I can't spell, all right? If you're with me, knock on plastic. Okay, okay, here we go. Saul replied, check it out, but I'm only from the tribe of Benjamin. <laughs> the smallest tribe in Israel. I kind of felt sorry for him when I read this at first. And my family is the least important of all the families of that tribe. And, and this is the phrase that pays here. Why are you talking to me like this? Come on. Here's, here's what, again, I can't believe. I cannot believe that Saul didn't recognize and know Samuel. I know I said it earlier. That would be like not recognizing LeBron or not recognizing President Obama. I mean, what? They're like popular. Everyone knows them. And I, I don't know, it, it might kind of give us some insight into Saul's persona because so often as we read and many times in the Bible, just these little things, we think, oh, they're just insignificant. I mean, Saul had just a little lying problem. You know, Saul just kind of humble brag now and then, no big deal. Well, as we keep reading and as we continue in this series, those little things start out small. Ladies, you're dating someone? Yeah, he's so great now. Now and then he exaggerates and tells little white lies. <laughs> he just has, I mean, a little drinking problem. <laughs> Those little things, deal with them. Parents, yeah, she just kinda you know, has a mouth on her. You know how she is, and she yells back all the time. <laughs> because we're gonna see this in the life of, of Saul. Little things that grew into big things. So obviously Saul is talking bad about himself, and he's just negative, and as you keep reading about him, he kind of leaves things out now and then of the account. And if you fast forward it, one time he was, this is gonna play out in a couple of weeks, but he was fighting a battle in Big Mash. Have you ever been up to your eyeballs in Big Mash before? And, and he just left some things out that were pretty major, you know, and it really cost him and it ended up costing him the throne. But what are you saying to yourself? What if we could hear the conversations we're having with ourselves? I mean, what if we could hear those conversations? I sure hope this message is connecting today. It's very tough to communicate something from the Old Testament. You have to study so much. I don't know, I just, I'm worrying about that. What would people do if they knew that I struggled with the fear of rejection a lot? Wow, football season started today and I'm glad someone showed up. I was <laughs> kind of worried. Is that, is that guy on the fifth row asleep? Oh man, he's probably bored. I like this jacket I have on today, but the pocket square is sort of wild. I don't really like it, but Lisa does. <laughs> I wonder what people would really think if they knew that I had hair transplants and that I wear makeup on stage because of the lights. I'm just nervous today because I don't want to be rejected. What? do you say about yourself? We need to say and know the word. We need to know what God says about us. We're forgivable, we're capable, 
We're lovable. And God wants us to present ourselves as usable. God wanted to use Saul's strengths and weaknesses. And time after time, we have just enough weaknesses, right, to lean into him so we can look back and go, oh, it's definitely you, God. It's definitely you. Because when we give everything to him, that is when he uses us. It's about surrender. Okay, here's another way, because we've got to fly now. Another way, another way to, to walk in, I almost went positive there. Another way to walk in the fear of rejection is engage in ear hustling. It's another millennial urban phrase, ear hustling. Do you, do you like this? Ear hustling. That, that, that means you listen and read conversations that you shouldn't even listen to or read about, and you wanna pick up stuff about yourself, what the haters are saying. Oh, and you follow it down, and you chase it down, and you roll it around, and you barbecue it, and you baste it, and you broil it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, because we're all gonna have haters. I run through our neighborhood, I enjoy that, I mean, after it's over, you know. <laughs> I'm, I run about this fast now. And I've noticed this because I've run for decades and when you run around any neighborhood, what do you hear? <laughs> Dogs. It's almost like they're in every yard behind fences. Barking. I was in El Paso last Sunday at a great, great church speaking at a conference and the pastor, who will be our guest at our C3 Global International Conference right here, he said, he goes, Ed, do you know why dogs bark when you're running? And I said, well, no. He said, they bark because they're confined to the yard, but you're going somewhere. I said, say that again? He said, those dogs are confined to their yard, but you're going somewhere. Students, those haters, dogs. That person at the gym, around the neighborhood, they're dogs. Don't overreact. I was thinking back to all the times I've run in neighborhoods, and here's where I've messed up. I've stopped before, because I like dogs, looked, and one time I walked over to this bulldog, and I'm thinking, bulldogs don't bite. There's no way this dog's gonna bite. And I did something very solistic, stuck my hand through the fence. <laughs> don't mess around with the dogs. Don't chase the dogs. Read about Saul. At certain times, he had the right they in his life, but he listened too much to the wrong they. Who are you listening to? If you listen or I listen to the wrong people, I'll walk in fear, the fear of rejection. And so will you all walk in insecurity my security has to be found in Jesus. Come on, Lord. In Jesus. Come on, Lord. In Jesus. Then I surround myself with the right people, and they give me not the primary props. The primary props come from Jesus. The secondary props. That's why we love community here. That's why we're called fellowship here. 
That's why I encourage you to join a small group here. That's why when I felt rejected, as I have in many ways over the last 29 years, I've leaned into these relationships right here at Fellowship. Engage in ear hustling. See, I got ahead of technology, didn't I? Let's see what else we have. Oh, Saul, son of Kish, was chosen from among them. You know what this is, don't you? Check this out. But when they looked for him, he disappeared. Oh, I know what this is. I almost left it out. There was a massive press I'm not gonna try to spell conference, I'll just put C. <laughs> there was a massive press C where, where Samuel stood before the people and he goes, now introducing from the tribe of Benjamin, he stands six feet six inches tall, he weighs 225 pounds, he's a romance novel cover and a Hallmark Channel actor waiting to happen. Uh, let's put our hands together for King Saul. Crickets. I mean, no, no, crickets. There, Saul, Saul was nowhere to be found. I'm like, what? Where's Saul? He disappeared. So they flew some drones out. No, that's just the on thy presence of God. So they asked the Lord, where is he? And the Lord said, he's hiding, come on now, in the baggage. You've got baggage, I've got baggage, Saul had baggage. And in the original language, it's stuff and y'all so could say basket. It's. He's the first basket case ever recorded in the Bible because he was insecure. He's nowhere to be found. Well, this is no, Ed, you're making, I mean, you're making a lot out of this, my, my, my brother. I mean, come on. I mean, he's scared. Squillions of people out there, the camera's rolling. He, he, I mean, I understand the guy was humble. Oh, really? I'm telling you, he had it together. Really? Think about when David, years later, makes his way to the front lines and everyone in the Israelite camp knew that Saul was the guy who was supposed to fight Goliath. What was Saul doing? Hiding. Hiding from his responsibilities. Hiding. Started out small. But look at the fall. Oh, it keeps going. Now, after the press conference, when Saul returned, a group of men whose hearts God had touched went with him. But there were some what? We don't use that phrase anymore. You scoundrel. Millennials, why don't you adopt that? <laughs> hey man, he's just going scoundrel. I like that. We made that up right here. Some scoundrels complain, how can this man save us? And they scorned him, refused him to bring him and show him the love, but Saul ignored him. Not really, no. Read about him in other battles. Always listening. He had these rabbit ears, man. Oh, what did you say? What do you mean by that? I struggle with insecurity and the fear of rejection. That's why the best thing, like on Instagram, is this feature called Mute. Have you seen this? Do you use it? I use it all the time. You don't unfollow someone because that could cause drama. <laughs> you mute them. I've muted I don't know how many people, I won't throw the number out, is changed 
my life. Mute them. I only follow just a few now because everyone else has been muted out of my life. Students, adults, it would change your life. Mute people. When I went to school back in the day, you know, you go to junior high, high school, whatever, peer pressure. I love, I love, I love peer pressure, you know, people peering. And, you know, you, oh, I want to get in that group or maybe not this group or that group. But then once you, once you made it to your home, ah, no more drama anymore. No more peer pressure. It's all good, man. I'm at home. I'm talking about back in the day. <sighs> I can just relax and be myself. Oh, now we can't. Are you kidding me? It's like we're at school. We're at home. <laughs> Meal time. Jogging around the neighborhood. You get ready to go to bed. It'll mess you up. It's messed me up. That's why I mute. Students, listen to me. You should mute people regularly. Just mute them, man. Mute them. Adults. I mean, we deal now with as much peer pressure as the kids. Oh, man, they got to travel there. Must be not. I'm a loser. <laughs> they drive, did they got a new car? Are you, how in the world did that happen? What? Oh, man. I'm nothing. I love social media. I'm not hating on it. It has its place. However, it can mess us up because we'll begin to compare and contrast and we'll begin to look at the other person and take our eyes off of Jesus and what I'll do is I'll try to start running in someone else's lane and saying, wow, they're, they're more blessed than I am. I, I want their blessings. No, no, I don't. No, no, you don't. That's a lie from the enemy. But Saul dealt with this and it really was one of the things that ruined him later on, we'll see. But again, if you, if you wanna walk in fear, fear of rejection, just engage in ear hustling, always chase down the negativity and the stuff, and hey, the people that are negative about you, they don't know you. These people didn't know Saul. They don't know you. Sometimes people will text me something negative or comment on something negative and someone, I don't even read the stuff. They'll go, oh man, someone's saying something bad about you. Well, they don't know me. I mean, you can take a picture of me now, but this is not me. To understand me, you gotta go all the way back to Irwin, North Carolina, a little mill town, and then from there, Canton, North Carolina, and then from there, Taylor, South Carolina, big cities, and then from there, Columbia, South Carolina, then from there, Houston, Texas, then from there, Florida State University in Tallahassee, then from there, Houston, Texas, then from there, going to seminary full-time and working full-time, then from there, we drive up to Fellowship Church, one car, one kid, rent house. Our offerings were maybe $1,000 a week. So you wanna know me? You really do? That's my life. So what you see now, I mean, God's blessed me, no question about it, God's blessed you, but you, you don't, what am I doing listening to someone that doesn't even know me? And they're the same in your life. They don't know you. Don't overreact. I have before, it's not worth it. Yeah, but if I sat down and talked to them, they would understand. No, they wouldn't. Arr, arr, arr. Let me see if there's one more. 
I could do about 20 of them. Oh yeah, this is another, I love this phrase. The, the third way to walk in the fear of rejection, this is awesome here, I love this. Speak in third person theatrics. I'd never heard that phrase before, maybe some millennials have. Third person theatrics would be, you know, speaking in the third person and just, just really bragging, you know, really putting yourself out there, self-promotion. What, what I'm afraid is that we so promote ourselves, we don't even know we're promoting ourselves. It's like what my brother says, whenever you see someone take a picture of someone famous with them, that means they don't know that person. <laughs> you didn't laugh because it was so convicting. I understand. <laughs> I'm the same way. It convicted me too. You know, I mean, when Ric Flair and The Undertaker were here, I had my picture taken with them. I mean, I don't know them, but I'm like, Ed, why are you doing this? I don't know. It's, I know someone who's important. I know someone who's popular. I spent 10 minutes with The Undertaker. <laughs> and then, think about it. We post this stuff like, a picture of our physique, guys. <laughs> Seriously? Don't even try to tell me you're trying to advertise some gym or some new workout. What are you smoking? Here's my favorite, the ladies will all get all beautied up, you know, take the picture. And all the comments, oh, you look gorgeous, you're so awesome. What do you think they're gonna say? That dress makes you look fat? We're that insecure? We are, aren't we? We, we have to put our image out there because we have to have those compliments. funny. We're, we're, we're so funny. We're so insecure. And I know all of us have a level of insecurity because of our depravity. I'm just talking about how to accentuate your insecurity. Speak in third person. Well, what happened to Saul? Saul's son, well, let's look. Uh, 1 Samuel 13. Let me just fly through this here. Um, let me see. Speak in third person. Okay, here we go. 1 Samuel 13. Jonathan, the J-man, that's Saul's son, attacked the Philistine machine, the outpost, at Giba, or Geba, and the Philistines heard about it. Uh-oh. Then Saul had the trumpet blown. You talking about tooting your own horn. And said throughout the land, let the Hebrews hear. So all Israel heard the news. Saul, Saul, you weren't even there. Saul has attacked the Philistine outpost, and now Israel has become obnoxious to the Philistines. I'm the man, I've gotta have credit, I've gotta be the person, you gotta show me the love and the gifts and the applause, and <laughs> yeah, it's, it's me, it's me, yeah, me. Me, I'll post this, and it's me, and my, and I, and, 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 Pride is so seductive, we don't even know we're prideful when we're being prideful. I could go on and on, and that's next week. Next week, we're gonna have fun with, with some stickers. That's all I'll say, it's gonna be fun. I think, I think, I think you'll enjoy it, but we continue. Hadn't this series been fun? I mean, I've learned so much. I've learned so much. But I gotta tell you this one story. About, about pride. I love this story. It's kind of a goofy one, but I like it. So would you give me about one minute to tell you the story? If you want to give me one minute, knock on plastic. Okay, thank you. There was this frog who lived in a little pond, and this frog made friends with these ducks, and the frog was like, all you ducks are always quacking about flying south and all these cool places, and the frog was like, would you mind helping me fly south? And the ducks were like, yeah, okay, okay. 
So the frog goes, this frog had a real high IQ. He goes, here's a reed. Uh, when it gets cold, I want one of you ducks to grab one end of the reed, the other, the other end, and then I'll just latch on to the middle and you can fly me south. These ducks were like, yeah, we'll do that. So it started getting cold and that's what happened. They took off. Here's the frog. And he's looking around, he's thinking, this is so beautiful up here. He's thinking about, man, I'm so smart, I'm so intelligent. Then they flew over a field and a farmer was in the field and the farmer goes, look at that. Ducks flying and a frog hanging on to the reed in the middle. I wonder who thought of that. The frog couldn't stand it. So he opened his mouth. I did! <laughs> Don't be a frog. <laughs> That's what Saul was. So, how do I become insecure? I gotta make sure I'm spitting mist. I've got to engage in ear hustling. I, I've got to speak in third person theatrics, but what we're gonna find out is the way to live for the Lord. Talk to God regularly about who you are. Ask him, get to know his infallible word and what it says about you and what it says about me. Number two, listen to the right people. I don't care if you're 52, 22, or 12. That's the beauty of the church. It's not a solo sport. Number three, encourage one another. Encourage. When you think it, say it. Don't go, well, I know he knows that. I know my wife understands. No, no, no. Say it. Jesus was rejected on a level that we can't even comprehend. He was rejected by his nation, by his family, by his friends. While he was dying on the cross for your sins and mine, the Bible says God the Father had to reject him because he couldn't even look at sin. Jesus rose again. And through this rejection, we can have perfection. We can place our faith, our trust on the person of Jesus. And that is when we'll know the great I am. And that's when we will walk in Godfidence. Would you pray with me? Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. Father, thank you so much for this great church. If you're here and you've never, ever, ever asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, just, just say this prayer after me. Just say, God, I admit to you that I'm a sinner. I turn from my sins and I turn to you, Jesus. I believe that you lived righteously, died sacrificially, rose bodily, and right now, I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life. I give you all I am and all I will ever become. If you prayed that prayer with me for the first time, would you lift your hand? Awesome, hands are going up in front, in the back. Awesome, that's incredible. Yes, I got you, man, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Unbelievable, God sees your hands. If you're at one of our campuses or maybe you're watching online or maybe you'll see this on television, just lift your hand where you are. And put those hands down. Others here, we've been walking in the fear of rejection too much. We need to simply say, God, use me as you will. God, mold me, 
break me, make me into your difference maker. Because I'm telling you something, he will. We ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen.